Hello, everybody. So um, I see that now Peter has arrived, so we may start. <laughs> I hope that you had a nice break. Huh? We are um, at the last session of today, huh? and uh, we have had a heavy agenda. So I hope that you have enjoyed it. I am Isabel Van Doorn. I am the deputy head of unit um, in DigiMove dealing with research and innovation. And in that unit, I am responsible for urban mobility. Um, and here, um, in, in this session, uh, we wanted to uh, discuss with you and to give you information also on one part of the new urban mobility framework, which is um, a first step towards integrated planning, because you may have understood from different uh, sessions before that uh, we cannot work in silos anymore, and we have the, the mission, the, the 100 uh, Climate Neutral Cities mission, and we know that uh, we need to make sure that all our plans are integrated, they make sense, they, they contribute to each other's um, goals, um, and that uh, we do not create um, an extra burden on the shoulders of the administration, the different departments who have to work um, hard uh, to make a good plan to, to achieve our um, ambitious uh, target. Um, and in the new urban mobility framework that we have adopted uh, last year, um, we have identified a need to uh, cooperate more with the Covenant of Mayor, the European Covenant of Mayor, um, to see um, how we can further um, integrate um, our sustainable urban mobility planning approach with the SECAP approach, the energy and climate one. And this session will focus on that. So we have asked uh, the Secretariat of the Convenant of Mayor to come and present the Convenant of Mayor and what they have done in, in that particular topic. And then we will have a um, presentation from cities uh, to share their own experience with this integration. So um, I would like to invite so my panelists. First, Peter Stylens, senior project um, coordinator and team leader of the mobility team in our cities. He will um, um, provide us with a uh, presentation of the, um, of the convenant of mayor, so the work of the convenant of mayor. The floor is yours. Thank you. Do you want? I will make uh, it? Yeah, I'll take yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I, oh, yeah, maybe we start, yes, uh, with the Slido, <laughs> very appropriately. Um, so I see people are already responding. Um, so two, two people, at least two people, <laughs> <laughs> know about SAMS and SECAPS um, somehow vaguely. Uh, the people that say no, I assume you know SAMS, but you probably don't know SECAPS. So Sustainable uh, Energy and Climate Action Plans. Okay, yeah, that's uh, an 18 responses. So I feel confident I can go into my presentation. <laughs> Okay, do I need to... Ah, good, thanks. Um, yeah, so as you can see from the bottom of the slide, my name is not Melin Gonzalez Piloyan. That was my uh, colleague working uh, uh, at EuroCities on the Covenant of Mayors. She was supposed to do the presentation, but due to medical reasons, she could not make it, but I've presented Covenant of Mayors uh, on previous occasions, so I think I should be capable of explaining. Good. Um, so in a nutshell, Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy, uh, so two important components, climate and energy. Uh, it groups 10,000 cities and towns uh, that work on climate and energy action. Um, it's a very citizen-oriented um, initiative, and the aim is to achieve um, with these cities uh, climate neutrality um, as soon as possible, of course, but um, on the way to 2050. It's also about leaving no one behind. That's the concept of uh, fair transition. And uh, I think I brought it up during the climate neutral cities debate this morning as well. So, and also relevant in the context of SAMS. So th these plans need to be um, 
addressing the needs of everyone, they need to be inclusive and provide accessible options. So um, it's not an initiative that stands uh, by itself, so it's uh, EU funded, but it's uh, linked to European and international uh, agreements on climate and energy. There's of course the Paris Agreement and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Um, at European level, we have the Clean Energy for All uh, package, the, the EU Adaptation Strategy, um, strategies on long-term emission reduction, Europe on the move, and the Clean Mobility package. And there are, uh, well, actually quite some related initiatives like European Green Deal, um, with the aim to become climate neutral by 2050. And uh, very important, the Sustainable and Smart Mobility Strategy as well. So basically what um, the Covenant of, of Mayors tries to achieve is to accelerate decarbonization, improve climate resilience, and alleviate energy poverty. Just to give you a bit of the timeline, so Covenant of Mayors started in 2008. Um, the aim was then to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions by 20% by 2020. In 2014, the, the concept of climate adaptation was um, included. Um, it's not a concept that we don't know within the transport community. We talk a lot about transport resilience, and that's also linked to the aspect of climate adaptation. In 2015, the commitment uh, from the signatories of the Covenant of Mayors was uh, actually increased. So the idea was to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions by 40% uh, by 2030. Um, apart from adaptation, also the dimension of energy poverty was added. So you can see that um, the ambitions, the objectives are expanding and um, it's quite a dynamic developing initiative. In 2016, also important to know, uh, the global dimension of uh, the covenant was uh, created. So it means that um, the framework set up in Europe is now being applied by cities and countries outside of Europe. Uh, we see the same with European Mobility Week, so I think it shows that as Europeans we, we have leadership on these domains, that's nice to see. In 2021, the commitments from the signatories and from the initiative as a whole were uh, further renewed. So now, of course, the focus is um, yeah, on achieving climate neutrality by 2050 for all the signatories. Um, and, of course, the, the elements of adaptation, um, energy poverty, but also the aspect of just transition um, have um, now formed the whole set of objectives of the initiative. Good. Um, this is basically what a commitment requires from uh, a signatory of the covenant. So basically you need to commit to setting the targets. You need to engage local stakeholders, local citizens. It's not only about designing a strategy, it's also about acting, uh, creating measures, implementing measures and sharing your expertise, your experiences, uh, your best practices with other cities, other signatories, other stakeholders in the network. This visual nicely summarizes what the Covenant of Mayors is about, so achieving affordable, secure, and sustainable energy, decarbonized cities, um, resilient communities, and of course, as mentioned before, the aspect of inclusivity, of fairness, are an important underlying factor uh, for the whole uh, Covenant community. And, of course, I will give you a very brief introduction. You can find all the details about Covenant of Mayors on uh, the eumayors.eu website. This slide expresses the, the journey that the cities have to follow uh, when they sign up to the Covenant of Mayors. So first of all, the moment they sign uh, the commitment, they have to set targets 
within the next two years. Um, assess the baseline, how are they doing in terms of emissions, in terms of energy performance. And from that point on, they need to start developing a sustainable energy and climate action plan. And very similar to uh, the SUM process, once the plan is there, it's not, it's not done. You need to go towards implementation and monitor progress, update your plan, implement, monitor again, so it's the famous planning and implementation cycle. The SECAP, so for the people in the room that uh, did not know, so basically um, it's, it is a commitment from the cities, the, the signatories we call them, that in which they set uh, mitigation targets, so how um, targets that they want to achieve in terms of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, for this, they have um, a methodology which they call the, the baseline emission inventory, which is uh, calculated on a common, in a common approach, uh, so comparable to all the cities involved in the initiative. They also have to formulate their adaptation goals based on a, on a risk and vulnerability assessment. And now, since that uh, energy poverty was added as dimension, they also need to list the actions that they want to undertake to ensure energy poverty. There's a minimum reporting required from each of the signatories, so they uh, need to report progress, and the progress is also um, critically monitored um, by external experts. And if you want to have an idea of what um, a SICAP looks like, you can find, and I also find that a very interesting aspect of Covenant of Mayors, and it doesn't, well, it, to some extent it exists for sums, but it's the full inventory of all the SICAPs that have been produced by the signatories of Covenant of Mayors. So these are published, and these can be consulted on the Covenant of Mayors website. The three pillars of the, of the Covenant of Mayors community, um, well, we have a Civitas community, which has similar pillars, but also European Mobility Week have, has these different layers of involvement. So it starts, of course, with the signatories, so the municipalities, the cities, the towns. Um, they are supported by a range of public authorities at higher level, which provide uh, support, which coordinate uh, amongst um, the different signatories within their level of competence. And basically, there's also a large group of supporters. Um, we have national, regional associations, networks, uh, local energy and climate agencies, and yours, private sector as well. And then a number of supporting uh, institutions and initiatives at European level, which are closely linked to the implementation of the, of the CCAPs and to maintaining the community and establishing connections with um, relevant other initiatives. So in, in, uh, in numbers, it's uh, quite impressive to see the number of signatories that signed up for the Covenant of Mayors, considering the high expectations and the real commitments that are um, expected. So more than 11,000 signatories. If you will go on the Covenant of Mayors website, you will see that they have listed for each of these signatories uh, a SICAP, so you can consult that publicly. And then, yeah, you can see the enormous amount of inhabitants uh, that are represented by the initiative, the number of countries where they are represented, and so on. Recently, of course, there was a, a kind of change in terms of priorities. The Repower EU uh, package uh, was, was uh, of course, very, a very strategic moment for the, the Covenant of Mayors community to understand like, how can we speed up um, together with all the cities in preparing and saving even more energy and reducing energy even more. Uh, there's a covenant of mayor's board which consists of uh, local mayors. They um, yeah, provide more policy inputs and feedback. They responded uh, to the package. And they also provided input for cities and also for the institutions on how to um, yeah, get the Repower EU package delivered and what cities can do at short notice 
to really prepare literally for the upcoming winter and help them to reduce uh, emissions and energy consumption. Uh, this initiative is called uh, the City's Energy Savings Sprint. If you will go on the Covenant of Mayors website, you can see that it also includes a um, very interesting list of immediate urgent measures that cities can apply, also in terms of transport, for example. Um, again, it's about avoiding transport where it's not needed. It's about making the sustainable modes more accessible, more affordable in the short term, um, creating more opportunities for cycling and walking. We have seen with Corona that was uh, actually possible and many cities did that. So if uh, you go back home and you want to consider what measures could be taken at short notice to save energy at a local level, uh, you can find them in this uh, saving sprint toolkit. And now we get a bit closer to transport in general. Um, so in, in the Covenant framework, there are uh, these three um, yeah, key elements. You have the, the, the mitigation sectors, you have the adaptation uh, framework, and the energy poverty element. We know that transport is a sector that is responsible for um, quite a substantial share of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So the percentages you see on the slide are the ones that are analyzed from uh, the CCAPs that are submitted by the Covenant of Mayors signatories. So you can see that private and commercial uh, transport in cities um, yeah, accounts for 19% of emissions. So, um, what, what are we doing to bring the Civitas and the Covenant of uh, Mayor's Community closer? So, at EuroCities, we are, we are yeah, a transversal network. We um, not only work on mobility, although that's a very nice topic to work on, but so also on energy, uh, on climate, digitalization, social inclusion. We try to bring these elements together. And that's why we also took the initiative within Covenant of Mayors um, to set up a community of the willing, we called it. Because we could see that, um, although we have many Civitas cities that are part of the Covenant of Mayors uh, initiative, uh, more needs to be done to bring the knowledge of the two communities together. And we try to do that now in partnership, for example, with UITP, with, with Polis, with Artico, with other organizations as well to really tap into the knowledge that has been produced by all these organizations, all the EU-funded projects, and not only the knowledge, also the tools as well, and bring this closer to the signatories within the Covenant of Mayors Initiative, and yeah, try to exploit it better and to create more synergies. And now we come to the, the essence of the presentation and the bridge to um, the next uh, presenters and uh, the next discussions. So why, why would we need uh, harmonization of SUMPs and SICAPs? Isabel, you mentioned it. It's about yeah, trying not to duplicate efforts or create even more uh, uh, burden for cities, even more planning strategies for them to, um, to apply. But it's about, yeah, um, trying to, to connect the dots between these different planning processes and avoid yeah, that um, the process is not harmonized, that it's based on different visions, different indicators, different um, assessment methodologies. And I want to highlight one uh, interesting project that already started in 2017, the Simpla project, which we followed very closely, because this really looked into how cities were developing um, their CCAPs, but also how it was linked to uh, their sustainable urban mobility plans. And basically, from the analysis, it shows that you have four different types of cities. Uh, so either they don't have a SUMP and a CCAP, or they have one or the other, or they have both, but there's a need to harmonize the plans. And in essence, you recognize the planning cycle as well, a bit compared to the SUMP planning cycle. It's a kind of generic planning cycle. 
but you can see that it's not something that is radically different. And I'm almost at the end of my presentation, so maybe I went a bit too quick. <laughs> but uh, one interesting best practice example I want to show, and I'm sure that the cities that will uh, present after me will be able to go a bit in more detail, is the city of Monzon in, in Spain. And what they did, for example, was they set up a harmonization team that brought the two planning processes together. They looked at what kind of indicators are you applying in the energy and climate team, and how does that correspond to what is being done in the transport team, in the mobility team. Apart from that, they also brought on board experts from other administrations, because it's about, like I mentioned before, it's social inclusion as well. Um, and um, yeah, it's about safety, uh, accessibility. Uh, it's about food, local food production. So all these elements, how do you yeah, harmonize that in a context of uh, SOMS and CCAPS? I will not go into much more detail. I'm there. I just want to advertise one specific deliverable from the Simpla project. Uh, it's now also an official uh, Altis SUMP guideline. Uh, it's very interesting. It shows you how the different steps you can take at the local level to uh, yeah, further harmonize the SUMP and the SICAP processes, the steps you need to take, the people you need to bring on board locally, and where you can find further uh, resources to get the job done. And I stop here. I only need to mention that so we, we have colleagues from ICLEI uh, in the room here as well who work with us on the implementation of Covenant of Mayors as well as um, yeah, Energy Cities, which is also an important organization. Thank you, uh, Peter, yeah. for this presentation. I hope that you have enjoyed this presentation. I, I invite you to yes. go and take a seat. And we will invite the three other panelists. Um, and one of you will start uh, presenting your case. So I would like to invite first uh, Dalila Huklan, uh, International Project Coordinators from Cluj Napoca. And maybe I invite you to, to, to be here. Um, then we will have, um, we, she will need your, uh, the clicker. Then I would like to invite also Cristina Pellegrini from um, City of Parma, EU project manager. And then I would like to invite Vaclav Novotny, uh, head of office of Transport Infrastructure, Institute of Planning and Development of City of Prague. Um, I have forgotten to invite you to post your question on Slido, huh, so you know how we work now. Uh, and so we will take your question um, after the presentations and, and the little exchange we will have. So if you have questions to, uh, to Peter, to Christina, and to the other panelists, uh, you are more than welcome. Um, so we will now start with um, a little round of presentation uh, of what, what are your, um, your experience, what, um, so what are the... Um, let's say, the state of play of your work on this uh, integration of SECAP and SOMP in your city, what you have done, what is your experience? So I give you first the floor. Yes, thank you, Isabel. Uh, I have a short presentation. I will come here. Okay. First of all, thank you for inviting me here and uh, to just uh, show you a little bit what Cluj-Napoca is doing in terms of, thank you, in terms of SAMS and SECAP. Okay. So, uh, early this year, in 2022, we adopted two strategic documents, Integrated Urban Development Strategy for Cluj 2030 and our SAMP. After that, in April, we found out that we are one of the 100 climate neutral cities, and w then we realized then that we have to... Um, do our CCAP, okay, Sustainable Energy Climate Action Plan Strategy. And because we are also part of the Convenant of Mayors and Euro Cities, we took the good example from Amazon, and we understood that we have to harmonize the, the two of them, 
and in terms of priority projects, in terms of accessibility, energy mobility, you can find chapters in our CCAP uh, about that you can find in our SAMP. So they, we, are, we try to harmonize them, of course, with a team of experts from the technical university, from the local ecosystem, from the ad administration. Okay, uh, I will tell, tell you in short lines a little bit about our goals by 2030. We plan um, to have uh, 190 hectares new green spaces, to plant uh, 100,000 trees, to install, and we started the process, to install networks of sensors and stations for measuring air, water, and soil quality. And this is one important project for us. 74 kilometers blue-green corridor of sustainable mobility on the bank of the main river of the city. Uh, it will cover four uh, communes in the metropolitan Cluj metropolitan area. You can find these projects in all our strategic documents and it's a, a really important one. We have a walkable city investment program. We invested more than 100 million euro and all our uh, European money. Uh, and this uh, somehow comprises the 15 minutes concept we all know. We are trying to, we are aiming at that. Uh, in terms of sustainable mobility, we aim at having the public transport fleet electric, 100% uh, electric by 2026. Now only 55% of it is electric. Uh, major investment projects, we are... Um, now in process of uh, preparing uh, the public procurement for subway and also we are aiming at uh, constructing and preparing projects for metropolitan train and belt. We have uh, now the metropolitan area of Cluj is growing, it's developing and then we are of course facing the commuters, commuters and all the uh, problems you, you all know. And we also have the strategic partnership with the Technical University of Cluj-Napoca for autonomous and hydrogen buses. Okay. Uh, one of the interesting and somehow promoting sustainable mobility, and because we are at sustainable urban uh, mobility days, uh, I, I put this on, on the slides. It's our uh, initiative Green Friday, free public transport on Fridays. We are trying to encourage people to use public transport, alternative, uh, al alternative modes of, uh, of uh, transport. And uh, our uh, three key factors that helped us with our, uh, our strat strategic documents and we work with um, following these three key factors, universities, we are uh, involving and we are working with the experts at all our projects. We are relying on co-design processes and uh, we are working with the local ecosystem and innovation, as Peter mentioned, no one should be left behind because we really believe that this is, uh, this is a key message that, uh, that will help us go further and uh, in a sustainable way. Okay, thank you very much. I try to be short. Thank you very much for this, uh, uh, the, all this information you have provided about what you do. Maybe may I invite Christina to take the floor now? You I will give you my mic, so thank you. you will. Thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Cristina Pellegrini, and I'm from the municipality of Parma. And today, we will talk about the integrated governance and the harmonization between energy and mobility in our city. So where, I, where is Parma? Parma is in the northern part of Italy, in Emilia-Romagna region. Emilia-Romagna region is one of the I'm not going to say most richest region, but anyway, a region that is very known for the high quality of life in its cities. It's a medium-sized city of around 200,000 inhabitants. And uh, why are we famous for, at least uh, at national level, I don't know at international level, of course, the gastronomy. We are one of the, I think there are around 20 UNESCO created cities of gastronomy. And we are famous both for the products, Parma's ham, Parmigiano, Parmesan cheese, but also from food processing. For example, Barilla is a company based in Parma. We are famous also for the opera. 
uh, one of the main opera composer in Parma, Giuseppe Verdi was born in Parma and we still have one of the most important uh, opera theater in Italy with festivals. And we are also famous for cycling because uh, all the, the Emilia Romagna cities in Emilia Romagna region are, have around the 20% of uh, the model split uh, on cycling because we are quite small, compact, uh, we are in the middle of the Padana Plain, so <laughs> we have the perfect uh, urban structure for cycling. And uh, this is uh, um, the main driving lines of the administration in the last five years. Of course, we worked on innovation, on attractivity of the city, and in, on inclusivity, but most of all on sustainability. And uh, this is what uh, are we going to say today? Uh, we are, of course, part of the Covenant of Mayors since 2013. We have a CIAP, a SUNP, a CICAP. Now we are uh, approving the General Urban Plan. And now this is one of the outcomes of the integration of mobility and energy in our city. As you can see, the governmental administration the governance uh, uh, is divided in, into four main areas, and one is the Parma City of the Future, with the encompass uh, departments like mobility, energy, environment, and digital transition. And this is the end, <laughs> and uh, in, in later on, I will, take, I will talk more about uh, how we arrived to this uh, uh, result. Thank you. Thank you. So your turn now, Vaclav. So um, in in few words, tell us also uh, what happens uh, in, in Prague about um, this integration of the cats and sums. Uh, yeah, uh, in Prague we have uh, also two documents separate, but uh, the first one was a mobility plan, which we uh, which was approved in uh, 2019, and now we have also uh, set up from 2021. Uh, around these days, uh, we, are, we try to update our mobility plan uh, with the thoughts from, from the SECAP uh, and uh, the uh, continuity uh, is uh, secured by the same people or some of the same pe people from the work groups because uh, both uh, mobility plan and SECAP was elaborated by the city uh, by the work group of the city uh, mem members from some organizations on city uh, and city hall and so on, but led by external project manager. But some people are the same, so there is a continuity between these two documents. Uh, our SECAP uh, ensure some measures from, from the mobility plan and uh, add some details to some specific tasks, uh, like, for example, electro electrification of the mobility sector. So in SECAP, we have uh, much more information about uh, chargers for, for uh, cars and also so uh, bus fleet electrification, uh, electrification. So now we try to put it back to the mobility plan, I hope, uh, next year. But uh, we have election uh, this, this week, so we'll see, we'll see the result. Thank you. Um, I see, um, Dalila, that you were nodding. So you also have the, the same kind of uh, uh, activities for the charging infrastructure in uh, Cluj de Apoca? Or um, um, can you share a bit more about uh, this? Yes, yes, that's why I, I was uh, nodding. Yeah, uh, we have also this kind of activities and we aim, as, as I told you, the electric dimension is really important for us. And uh, yes, we, are, we have now uh, 40, 40 electric stations for cars and we are constructing more more and of course for e-scooters. We were also the, the first uh, city in Romania that uh, had uh, regulations for e-scooters, so we prepared somehow the, the ground for this. Okay, thank you. I understand from the presentation that you are trying to, to bring the, the different departments together. Right? It was clear from your presentation, Christina. Can you share already some experience about this grouping of departments? Yes, 
It's okay. We did, it's okay. We did it uh, with the Simpla project that Peter mentioned before. We were one of the cities involved in this uh, project. Uh, this project was uh, founded by the European Commission, Horizon 2020, and was led by an uh, uh, Italian research center, Area Science Park Trieste. We were one of the Italian cities involved, and uh, we have been assisted, uh, thanks to the project, by a um, consultant an expert who led uh, and uh, um, helped us in all the process because it took uh, eight months, I think, to do all the steps of the, of the process that we, you can, are able to read on the, guide, on the different guidelines. I think uh, to uh, add to what Peter said, the website is still uh, live. Uh, so you can find uh, the um, guideline Peter mentioned, but a, a lot of other material also in different languages. Anyway, we had uh, uh, the, the, the help of an expert to do all the steps, for example, to have the political uh, commitment to get also the possibility of creating this uh, interdepartmental group, mobility and energy, uh, to how to involve the stakeholders, because of course uh, the, C the CIAP and the SUMP had their own participate on participation processes, but it was necessary to do something together, and uh, also uh, how to uh, involve uh, all the different people and experts also outside the municipality. At the end of this process, we had uh, an harmonization report with some advices. Uh, I wrote down <laughs> all that we did wrong so that you can be inspired from our mistakes. <laughs> Anyway, the suggestion was, of course, to um, have uh, a, a harmonization of the vision because, uh, as you have seen before, uh, the CEAP was approved in 2013 and the SUMP in 2017. So each one contained a vision, which was slightly or not so slightly different. <laughs> Uh, they, they also suggested us to work on monitoring because uh, that was the weakest point, at least for us, because uh, uh, both plans has is its own monitoring, its own methodology. The SEAP follows the Convenant, the SAMP has another kind of uh, uh, monitoring. So uh, harmonizing also the indicator is very important uh, and also harmonizing the ears. Uh, we didn't uh, no notice that, but also harmonizing the years of the monitoring is very important because otherwise you cannot compare anything. And most important, you have to harmonize the projects <laughs> because otherwise it's quite difficult. For example, our SEAP, uh, which was uh, approved before the SUNP, didn't take notice about electric mobility which uh, we know that has a lot of uh, consequences also on energy and uh, in our SEAP it was not contained. Um, so we didn't have uh, uh, anything in our SEAP also on um, uh, mobility, active mobility, and also on car sharing and bike sharing that also have uh, an, uh, direct uh, or an uh, and also indirect uh, consequences on energy. But uh, also on logistics, the SEAP uh, said uh, something and this SUNP contain other measures, so <laughs> they have to talk to each other. Anyway, we had this harmonization report containing all these advices, and at the end of uh, Simpla, we also have uh, this thing that uh, the working group, which was created just for this project, for harmonizing the two plans, started working together because uh, uh, before the energy, the, the energy office was under the public works, the works department, now we have the energy and mobility department. So I think this could also be a success story of Simpla that uh, uh, we passed from a group that was created just for a project to a more uh, defined and permanent structure. Uh, thank you for all this, uh, let's say, experience that you are sharing. Vaclav, I also understand, so Christina was also sharing um, lessons learned. Uh, do you have lessons uh, learned to share with, with, uh, with uh, the audience about also the challenge uh, you have faced uh, uh, in this harmonization process? Uh, I think... Uh politicians uh, will will be will be maybe a bit problem but they they sign a con convent of mayors so it could could be 
maybe only uh, about some discussions, but uh, I think it m could be hard, uh, for example, about toll uh, in the city or some, some specific measures and about financing because, because uh, uh, climate, uh, climate resilience is not cheap, so we need some, some financial resources and we need to discuss with it, so... Thank you. Um, maybe going a bit forward now, so um, uh, we have talked already a lot about the mission uh, during the Urban Mobility Days. You are uh, members of, uh, of, of one of the, let's say, um, 100 um, climate neutral uh, mission cities, I don't know how to place the words. Um, so. Um, so we will not only do an integration between SECAP and SOM, and we are going further, and we, you will have to build contracts. So how do you see the interaction, um, and how do you see the path towards this uh, integrated approach? Uh, we are starting to work uh, on this uh, in these days, uh, because, uh, as you know, the European Commission selected the city in April, and now it's time to really start the work ahead. Um, yes, as you have, se have said, uh, we are not just talking about integration between two uh, planning instruments, but we are talking to about a wider integration uh, because we will have to sign a climate city contract with the European Commission and uh, together with this uh, contract we will have to uh, do uh, another plan, <laughs> of course, a climate action plan and this will be quite uh, important and I think also a bit difficult because uh, we, all, we have all these plans and uh, everyone, uh, every of this plan is saying something, but it's not enough. So we will have to do this plan, action plan, containing measure on energy, mobility, environment, and digital transition, so ICT. And we will have to combine everything together. Of course, another challenge is that, for example, our CCAP, uh, which we approved uh, last year, uh, had the goal of reducing uh, uh, carbon emission, environmental uh, emission uh, at, in 2030 in, uh, from a range between the 36 and 53 percent. So now we have to uh, increase a lot uh, these percentages, so we have to find uh, uh, other measures to be included this, in this plan, and then we will have to uh, upgrade and update both the CCAP and the, and the SUMP because, of course, they will be no longer useful and no longer updated. All this integration will also, uh, of the plans, we will have to work also on the uh, integrated governance, not only at the internal level. We are forming right now a working group with uh, people from the, and staff from all these departments. And from, um, by now, it will be this way. But in a year, maybe there will be another department containing all these different uh, offices. Because uh, if we want to reach climate neutrality, maybe there is the need of a climate neutrality office. We don't know at the, at the moment, but it is something that we will find out in one year. And also, we will have to work very closely, as also my other colleagues uh, uh, were saying, with the, the ecosystem and the stakeholders, because uh, a city, a local authority itself uh, alone, it's not able to reach these uh, ambitious goals. So the governance will be, of course, very important to work on the internal governance, but also on the governance uh, of the city. Mm, the private sector must be deeply involved in this challenge, not only uh, with plants, not only with resources, but also they have to share this goal and this ambition with us. Thank you. Dalila, can you also share your experience and maybe um, um, tell us how the, the EU, the European Commission, can help you uh, to achieve all these objectives? Yeah, as Christina said, it's a, it's a real challenge for us also to do another document, the climate action plan and the investment plan, the two documents needed to sign the climate city contract. So in Cluj-Napoca, we set up a group named Cluj 2030 
that uh, has more topics, mobility, energy, waste, and of course, new European Bauhaus and how we, we in terms of how, what we do with buildings and so on. And um, now uh, we are also, we want to apply now, I'm telling the secret, we want to apply for the call for pilot cities that Net Zero Cities launched in uh, September 5, I think, and we are preparing also together with this Cluj 2030 group. Uh, and if you ask me how EU level helped us, well, if we speak about SAMP, we had Jaspers and their methodology and it, it worked extraordinary. A big thank you for their team and all their efforts to help us with the SAMP. And uh, if we speak about the CCAP, we have the convenant and thank you very much. So uh, for Cluj Napoca, it was really helpful to be part of these networks, European networks. So thank you. Thank you very much. I have to admit that I have no watch, so maybe I don't know where we are. So I guess that we still have time for questions. So if we can open the, the slide. -o. Sorry to surprise you. OK. Um, are you able to read the question, dear panelists? Um, we have one first question. What is your vision on the type of energy used for transport on the path to become climate neutral? Should we rely on electricity? Do you, one of you, take uh, the question? Well, um, for my experience and uh, what uh, are, is happening now, relying only on one uh, form uh, is uh, wrong. Of course, uh, electricity, electric e-buses e are the future and in uh, some city already a reality. But for example, we have invested a lot on uh, CNG and on uh, methane buses. And now the prices of methane is uh, seven. Uh, um, it's uh, a lot uh, higher, so it's a bit, uh, mm, it's not uh, a good idea, according to me, to just rely on just one uh, uh, energy source. Thank you. Uh, can I ask, uh, can I uh, take another question? So I saw uh, the question from Ivo. Is the creation of these, the documents, um, um, do we involve uh, the citizens? And how do we do that? I David? was precisely uh, looking at the question. Yes, so in Cluj Napoca, we are involving citizens because we have the Civic Imagination and Innovation Center. It's cheek, it's a place where we debate projects, initiatives. Since 2017, when we opened this cheek, we had more than 40 debates, and we had also debates on how we elaborate and what we will have in our integrated, integrated urban development plan. We had public debates with the citizen and the experts and representatives for, for, from public administration about the elaboration of uh, SAMP. So yes, we involve, in Cluj Napoca, we involve the citizens. We have this participatory tool, tool if you want to name it like that. Is a, it's a forum where we meet and discuss with the citizens if it, we launch public invitations on a topic and we say the next Monday at that hour we meet and discuss and we are uh, taking into consideration their, their opinion. Yes, yes. Thank since you. 2017. Vaclav, do you have something to share on the two questions we have had? Uh, yeah, mm, I I'm, uh, want to. Uh, I'm interested in, in the question of, about the competing logistic operators Super. because I think it's uh, only the way it's uh, have to some uh, some re regulations for for the city because it's only the way uh, how to speak with every of them and uh, how to have uh, logistic service. Uh, let's say uh, more expensive because to today it's it's cheap and the cheapest way is to to have a uh, uh, van with uh, com combustion engine so only the way is to have some regulations in the city uh, which uh, mm, take everybody to to one round table in my opinion so okay i see that there is another question for you Climate resilience requires money, effort, skills. 
but comparing to rebalancing damages caused by climate change, it is quite low? No. Yeah, sure. Uh, in in my, my, my opinion, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, obvious that uh, the the damages uh, of, of the climate change is much more higher, but uh, it's really hard to uh, to say it to people or to people understand that problem because they only say uh, or, or uh, smell uh, some uh, some pollutants around them, but CO2 they they can't yeah. see it. And uh, if if you ask a common citizen. Uh, maybe you say, oh, so let's plant the trees. It's all of it. But it's not the true, and uh, many people, it, it's really, really uh, hard to, to convince people that it's the uh, really uh, big problem. Okay, thank you. I see some questions on the CECAP, and I, uh, there was um, a, a question before about will the CECAP be the overarching uh, document? I see another one on do I understand correctly that the CECAP will replace the SUMP for the uh, 100 climate neutral cities with the CECAP. I see you, uh, Christina, telling me no, but please explain why you say no. I understand correctly that the SECA would replace the SAMP without a SECA yet? No, I don't think so. I think that the SECA, the SUNP, will continue to exist. And uh, of course, the, the actions will be all contained in this uh, climate uh, plan. I don't know if you have other <laughs> thoughts about it. Uh, I think it can even have a higher degree of complexity because uh, in the past, um, when, when smart cities were still a very trending uh, topic, uh, we, we know of cities that developed smart city strategies, uh, uh, digitalization strategies, and then uh, for urban logistics, there are SOLPs. And I, I think uh, depending on the city and, and the level of effort they can put into it, the challenges they have, um, each of these plans have a, a reason for existing by themselves. But depending on the real ambition of the city, yeah, you will need to compile and recompile and, and yeah, um, harmonize and synchronize for the specific ambitions, strategies you want to yeah, achieve. But uh, it's an interesting question, which one, which super plan will be <laughs> replacing all the other plans? Um, I, I also have the feeling that, like you said, you will continue with the SUMP, with the CCAP, you will use it as a basis for your climate neutrality action plan, but it doesn't mean that you will stop further elaborating and improving the other plans. No. I think we will continue also to monitor uh, the, the CCAP every two years, and I also think that in tw uh, 2025 we will do another SUMP also if we have a climate action plan, because of course they will have to dialogue all together, but I don't think that for us uh, the climate action plan that we will realize, uh, I hope next year for the 100 city mission we replace all the other planning documents. Okay, I see that Dalila, you agreed uh, with this approach. Yes, but uh, I was uh, precisely thinking about the monitoring phase that is really important and we are looking also at that in Cluj-Napoca because now it's nice, we have the plans, we are trying, but what we do exactly, we want to see the data, the numbers in, in two years. Super. Christina, again a question for you. Huh? So, yes. uh, you stated that uh, we, we have a 25 model share of bike. What is your goal for 2030? Well, actually, 20. <laughs> so not 25. And 20, 25, I, I think it's actually the goal we have for 2020, 20, 25, which was the end of the SUNP. Uh, of course, going forth, farther will be a bit difficult, I think, because uh, we have a critical mass of people that will never stop using the car and it's difficult to, to go uh, over 25%, but 
but uh, of course uh, we will aim to go beyond 25, maybe 30 percent, I don't know. We will see next year within our climate action plan uh, which are the realistic targets. Thank you. Um, maybe I am coming um, with my question uh, towards the end of, of the session. So, um, if you would like to uh, provide uh, three uh, points of advice for cities um, who want to follow, um, to follow in your steps uh, on what to do and what to avoid in the integration process, maybe Vaclav, you could come and start. Ah, you want it? Okay. Do you want to reply to? Oh, okay. Ah, you have not listened to my question. So, <laughs> give me the three points of advice you would give to the cities on what to do and what to avoid uh, in the integration process. Uh, I think definitely it's necessary to, to have good good marketing because this long it, it's a long long term action. So it's uh, really necessary to. Uh, Put their marketing, so it means also par participation uh, with with the stakeholders and also with the citizens. It's it's really necessary, and uh, to to have the same people uh, in in the work groups, in the uh, action groups of both uh, documents. I think it's really necessary to have a continuity. Thank you, Dalila. Yes, I think uh, my piece of advice is to rely on the experts, on the specialists, of course, and uh, try, at, in our case, it, it, we did all our strategic documents for Cluj, for, the, for Cluj Napoca for the city, but for the metropolitan area. It's really impor important to have an integrated vision. I think it's, it's really important. Thank, Thank you. you. Christina? Uh, I think it's uh, my first suggestion and it's break the silos without whatever it takes because it is a nonsense that uh, at least in our experience the energy department doesn't talk with the mobility department or the planning department uh, and that we find all the different things in different plans uh, it's uh, unbelievable and uh, something that you shouldn't do is uh, for the local authorities think you can do it uh, only yourself so try to involve uh, stakeholders citizens as much as you can we had an experience with the european project uh, ruggedized uh, we were a fellow city uh, of a smart cities and community project. The uh, lighthouse cities were uh, Rotterdam, Umeå and Glasgow and we were fellow cities with uh, Brno, uh, the city of Brno that hosted, uh, host, is host, hosting us and Gdansk. And uh, we did a foresight process with fellow cities to have a smart city plan and imagine how the city could be in 2030 uh, as a smart city. And actually, uh, we have an enthusiastic response from our stakeholders. Um, uh, all the workshop uh, were attending from dozen and a lot of uh, different companies and research centers. We signed the Smart City Protocol with more than 40 entities. So stakeholders are ready to cooperate. Uh, they were enthusiastic that the public administration started this kind of uh, process uh, uh, with a real participation process. So don't be afraid. Uh, try. And uh, I think that uh, this is the moment that everyone is willing to come on board uh, on climate issues. Thank you. I have given the floor to the online question. So maybe if the audience has no um, a question, questions uh, to the panelists, so it is the time for you to do it. Oh, you are all tired. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you saved my life. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, so, oh, okay, that's okay. It's a simple question. Um, when you are doing the integration process and more actors are like uh, being part of the process for SEIP or some, uh, SAMP, are you not afraid that it's taking much more longer time to actually implement it? Or have you maybe built up new communication strategies or communication skills or something like this? Yeah, thank you. It's a question for two hours. Okay, difficult to answer, difficult to answer. Could you share your views, maybe? Okay, so you have no opinion, you have no opinion on it. 
wait, wait, wait. The, the mic is coming back to you. Well, I know that in Berlin is something that it's taking a lot of time when a lot of uh, authorities have to talk to each other, and it's also like a human problem, uh, like human resources problem. And uh, yeah, this is when when they hear the word of integration of more authorities, then it's like half of a heart attack when they have to wait and for an answer and so on. But what I understand from, from for example, the, um, the, the, let's say the example of Cretina of Parma, they have brought all of them together in a one department with the same boss. I think that it helps. That, that's my personal view. Um, if I may share the experience of uh, the European Commission, um, we are, um, Digimove is contributing to the mission, so we work in, in a group. Um, so we have different layers of, co uh, of coordination, so we are part of what we call the mission secretariat. We are part of a mission owner group, so we own the baby, we own the mission, we contribute to it. So there are various ways, a creative way to, to have people working together. And I don't share your view that it takes time because if you start having this team approach, this team spirit across the department, it can be quick. My colleague um, staying in Brussels he is in constant uh, discussion with our colleagues from the different uh, uh, DG, from DG Inair, from DG Regio, from, with DG uh, RTD. So um, it is possible, I think, to work uh, quickly in an inter-service version. So um, I think that if you break the silos, uh, I think that you can have a, an easy process and easy, easy answer to your question. But I don't know, you see, do it again. No, of, co of course it yeah. takes time to integrate and yeah. listen to everyone and uh, have uh, come to a solution, uh, hearing 10 people, 20 people, but at least you arrive to a solution that is shared and uh, a shared solution. Otherwise, uh, we have only the energy department solution mm -hmm. that maybe can differ from the mobility department solution on the urban planning solu uh, department solution. So I think that, uh, of course, uh, having a department uh, with mobility and energy together helped a lot, for example, for our, uh, ener uh, for our electric mobility plan. And, uh, but uh, even if you are not in the same department, you have to talk uh, with uh, the, uh, your colleagues and uh, because climate uh, neutrality and the climate challenge is something that uh, we have mentioned the energy department, the, the mobility department, the environmental department and the ICT, but encompass a lot of other departments, for example, the social department. We didn't talk about the, or, or Peter uh, told, just uh, told us something, but uh, it's not uh, an, uh, a climate transition or an energy transition if it's not a fair transition or just transition. So we will have to break the silos not only between mobility and energy, but between all the other departments and a lot of stakeholders, not only related to mobility and energy, but that are uh, helping us and can help us to reach climate neutrality and willing to do something for sustainability. I see a question um, on the energy crisis. Can one of you um, reply to this question? Dalila, Vaclav, uh, Christina? because uh, our uh, uh, mobility agency told us that they will have to uh, pay seven uh, times more for the, for the fuel for the buses. So, of course, uh, the current energy crisis will create some setbacks in our goals, but uh, we, we will have to cope it and hope that it lasts uh, not uh, too much. Mm -mm. Dalila, you wanted to add something? Only something short. I want to mention, yes, of course, this energy crisis is affecting us all. And today, when it's the International Day of Peace, we shouldn't be talking about war at all. Like never. Thank you. There, there is a question over there. Yeah, thank you very much. First of all, congratulations for what we are doing. But my question is, to what extent the integration of different strategies of, uh, or visions at local level across different sectors or different, um, let's say, type of stakeholders is helped how the funds at national level are distributed at local level? So I think that fragmentation of governance is it, in fact, everybody follows the money. <laughs> so how does it help you? 
this is uh, <laughs> a very important question. Um, together with the other eight uh, Italian cities, because uh, in Italy nine cities were selected for the 100 city mission, we have just signed a protocol with the ministry, with the mobility and transport and infrastructure. We not only we are nine, we also will be backed from other cities, and we, I think that there will be the possibility, thanks to uh, the mission, to set up a closer cooperation with the national government also for the structural funds of this 21-27 uh, uh, programming period and also for the National Resilience Plan, we hope at least. And we also ask member states to set up their national support framework. Huh? So, uh, uh, and Dalila, you want to add something? Mania somehow is different. One month, uh, month ago, the research ministry um, where we received an email and uh, they launched in Romania the Mirror Mission City Hub. In Romania, we have three cities, Cluj-Napoca, Suceava, and the, the second district of Bucharest in 100 climate mission. And uh, now we have to meet and discuss, I don't know, funding schemes to see exactly what they are proposing. But we have, at the national level, we have these, this mirror mission cities hub. And we are trying to see exactly, to talk about the funding. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think that we are all exhausted huh? and you have provided a lot of uh, information. Uh, so I would like to, to close the session now. Uh, thank a lot for you and I invite uh, the audience to uh, we thank you also by an applause. I will not dare summarizing what I have learned. I have learned a lot, so I hope that you, uh, you also learned a lot. And so with this, I would like to close the session and thank you for your attendance until the end of the day. Enjoy your evening in Brno.